Welcome back. Once again, it's time for the Golden Age of DC Comics 365 Days. I take this beloved hardcover coffee table book given to me about two decades ago by one of my best friends. This has been surfing my coffee table ever since, and it has been a continuous source of comic book shop style conversations. And I am so grateful and blessed to have this in my life and you too for joining me here today. I use this book for its intended purpose. It's a 365 days book. We're gonna open up to today's date, August the 11th. We're going to look at some art from an antediluvian age. We are going to read the blurb and then we're going to talk about comic books. And we are going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. We are. So let's uh, get to it. The Golden Age of DC Comics runs between 1938 and 1955. The Silver Age starts in 1956 until 1970. The Bronze Age, I'm a Bronze Age baby, goes from 1970 to 1985. And the Copper Age begins in 1985 or so. I've gotten this approximation by using the uh, Overstreet Price Guide, the, cu the current edition, as a standard. Their glossary has uh, as a, is a wonderful resource, and I believe this to be a good standard in which to start conversations about, say, what's our current age? What are we into right now? Let's get into it. Yeah, this is a 2004 Abrams print publication uh, curated and written by Les Daniels. Chip Kidd and Jeff Spear. There is a link to the Amazon page in the description. If you want your own copy, you can play along at home. It'll look great on your coffee table, and it makes a great gift for a geek. I know. And um, yeah, let's get to it. We're going to open up to today's date. It's August the 11th, and I hope you are doing awesome. I want you to have some of this, the power to change your day. And uh, if make the choice. Don't be clobbered by your day. Clobber the day. Carpe diem. Indeed. This is art by C.C. C. Beck from Captain Marvel, Ad Captain Marvel Adventures number 24, June of 1943. The, ob the object is to knock off the gag, but not all, my, not all of my teeth. Ooh, it's Billy Batson. The secret identity of Captain Marvel, the kid who, upon saying his magic word, transforms into the Earth's mightiest mortal, the Big Red Cheese himself, Captain Marvel. Yes. And um, let's read the blurb and get to it. Villains weren't supposed to know that Billy Batson was secretly the alter ego of Captain Marvel, but somehow they instinctively were instinctively inspired to gag Billy so he couldn't pronounce his magic word Shazam that part of the story appeared almost automatically but writers strained their brains looking for different ways for Billy to set himself free so that Captain Marvel could be unleashed in this panel Billy is being dragged behind an airplane that's about to take light and decides he can scrape off his gag without doing himself an injury. It works here, but don't try it at home. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, let's look at that once again. This is, you know, child endangerment. Oh, think of the children. This is very, very, very far away from William uh, Molston's intent over on Wonder Woman at the same time in his use of ropes and gags and stuffs, you know, different intention. His was a bit more psychological. This was just about putting your hero or heroine into peril in order to drive the story. No actual um, fic fictional children were harmed in this. But think about, he had to piss somebody off. You were going to leave him for dead. I mean, is that a noose around his neck? Were they going to, like, hang him? From the plane after they, dra they, they dragged him for, for, for several hundred yards. What a gruesome fate. Oh my goodness. Uh huh. Poor Billy. But he got out of it. Yeah, he knocked that, uh, that gag off and he was able to say his magic word Shazam. And um, yeah, what's on the docket today? We're going to talk about 
magic words. Why not? Abracadabra. Hocus Pocus. Presto Changeo. Alakazam. Are there any more? Yeah, let's see. Voila. Open Sesame, which is uh, open says me. So it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a slangish kind of thing. It's a spoken joke. It's a pun. Open Sesame. This is open says me. It says, you know, said, I say it. Yeah. Uh, Sim Salabim. Uh, Mojo Calamaris. You know, there, there, there are more. 14 magic words. <laughs> Wands at the ready. Yeah. Alakazam. Hocus Pocus. Uh, voila. Voila. It was a big one. Um, then there are, you know, oof, there, there are some I don't want to say. What if I unleash a magic word and, and, and open up a portal to a different dimension and a demon pops out? I don't want that. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't want that on me. I'm also scared of, uh, of CAPTCHAs, you know what I mean? Verification things on websites, CAPTCHAs that ask you to, in, you know, type in something. And I'm always weirded out that... Uh, what if this is the name of some demon and we accidentally summon a demon? I don't believe in that stuff, but I am a Buffy fan. And there was that episode where, where, the, where the demon was in the computer. Remember that? It was like season one or two. and Yeah, it was one of the Jenny Calendar episodes. I love Jenny Calendar. Hello. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, this is going to be a quick one today. It's about... Um, I don't think it was about child endangerment. You know, um, I think it was about putting the, the hero into a situation where it's a cliffhanger and you don't know how he's going to get out of this one this time. And peril. Peril literally creates the, uh, the tension and the traction we need to tell stories. And then we have an emotional release when everything turns out all right, the good guys win, and saves the day. We've been talking about comic books, and we're going to be talking about comic books every day for the rest of the year. So tune in tomorrow, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern, and we'll find out who we're talking about when we turn the page tomorrow. Like and subscribe. Turn on those notifications. Ring that bell. I would love to earn your subscription. We make daily content here. We talk about cooking, spirituality, gratitude. I point out planets in the pre-dawn morning, and the, if it's a clear sky and they're out, I will point out the planet Venus to you. You could see it too. Seriously, we're under the same sky, aren't we? And um, also, I make little nature shorts of bunnies eating their breakfast on the lawn. I think that's so cute, and it's a moment of serenity before my work day. And I wanted to, sh I like to share that kind of stuff with you. So join us. Thank you so very much. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. And we will see you again tomorrow in these funny pages. Cheers. Okay, bye-bye.